كثير اشياء كثير يعني بس بطبيعه الحال اشياء هيك مخربطه فلسطين يعني ايديولوجيا اذا بدك تحولت مع الوقت بطلت يعني بطلت العلاقه بالارض العلاقه بالناس بالمخيم شيء اكثر يعني فكر يعني ما بعرف كيف اقولها بس فيك تقول حلم There are about 4.6 million Palestinians living throughout the world, most living in the Arab world, though many can also be found throughout Europe, Latin America, and the United States. The League of Nations gave the British colonial control over Palestine under the Balfour Declaration of 1917. Despite the non-Jewish community already occupying the area, the British declared Palestine a safe haven for the global Jewish community, especially during the dates surrounding the Holocaust. In 1947, the United Nations General Assembly adopted Resolution 181 for the future government of Palestine. This resolution recommended the partition of land between two states of Palestine, one Jewish and one Arab, though their economy was to remain one. Palestine rejected this mandate, and a year later, the first Arab-Israeli war broke out. As a result of this war, many Palestinians were exiled and claimed refugee status. It is estimated about 750,000 out of the 900,000 Palestinians living in Palestine at the time were uprooted and forced to leave the area, many of them seeking refuge in neighboring countries such as Lebanon. Approximately 10,000 Jews were forced to evacuate after this first war. However, during the three years following, about 700,000 Jews settled in the area, compared to no Palestinians returning to their land. Lebanon is home to about 400,000 Palestinians, which makes up about 10% of its population. There are about 12 refugee camps situated around the country, all of which suffer from improper infrastructure, overcrowding, poverty, and unemployment. This is partially due to the fact that the Lebanese government has created official state policies which deny the Palestinians many social and civil rights. In 2001, Palestinians were no longer allowed to own any property in Lebanon or to pass on already owned property to their children. The parliament adopted an amendment to the country's property laws that prohibited the acquisition of real estate by any person not a citizen of a recognized state. The government has also established a policy that grants work permits to foreign nationals as long as their state grants the same right to Lebanese nationals. This is unfair to Palestinians since they do not have a state that could provide reciprocal treatment to Lebanese nationals. As a result, the rate of unemployment among the refugee population increased tremendously, and it is estimated that 60% of Palestinians in Lebanon live below the poverty line. Legislation has also been made in order to prevent Palestinians from beginning Tauten, a term used for the process of naturalization. Right-wing Christians and Shiite radicals have given their support towards this legislation, which only impoverishes Palestinians even more. When asked about this matter, Hezbollah spokesman Hassan Hadroj stated, The threat of Tautin is genuine. It is one of the ways in which Israel, backed by the U.S., is endangering the region. Because of the marginalization and mistreatment by the Lebanese government, many Palestinians have become vulnerable to jihadist groups. In the largest refugee camp in Lebanon, Ain al which holds approximately 70,000 Palestinians, a haven for dangerous jihadist groups like Hamas and Fatah, has been established. Taking the advantage of their loss of nationalism, these groups promise Palestinians a borderless Muslim heaven. In his book, Everyday Jihad, French scholar Bernard Rougier explains, Palestinian Salafist militants have devoted themselves to defending the imaginary borders of identity declaring themselves their protectors and guardians of the cause of Sunni Islam worldwide. And the fact that the Lebanese state's presence is absent inside the refugee camp only strengthens jihadist group control over the Palestinian population. 
Palestinians also have little to no access to the government's public health, to public social services, and to the educational facilities. Furthermore, Palestinians are banned from working in more than 70 trades and professions, such as medicine, journalism, and law. As a result, Palestinians have been forced to rely on the United Nations Relief and Work Agency, UNRWA. My Umma, my Umma, he will say, UNRWA is a relief and human development agency whose primary scope of duties is the provision of education, health care, social services, and emergency aid to the refugees living in Lebanon and other Arab countries. However, there are several NGOs that have come to existence. You know, there are a variety of groups um, doing all kinds of stuff. I thought one of the, the more interesting um, groups is uh, is this thing called the American Near East Refugee Aid, which is also known as ANERA. And what they're doing is a lot of healthcare service-oriented work. So they're, they're going into camps and setting up playgrounds so that kids have places to play, you know, and get exercise, but also bringing in medical supplies and helping, um, helping people learn how to take care of their own healthcare services because they're they don't have access to health care. I mean, they're, they're, I think I read somewhere was one, for every one person, or for, for every thousand persons, there was one doctor. So you can imagine if, the, you know, the kind of illnesses that are circulating through these camps. So there are NGOs that are actually listed as Lebanese NGOs because Palestinians are not allowed to have their own organizations. It's, it's government-mandated that they can't form organizations, so they have to have Lebanese organizations, you know, help service um, the needs of the refugees. There's also um, some efforts to create, among these different NGOs, a Palestinian network, which is kind of interesting, right? So instead of having all of these different groups do disjointed work with the camps and disjointed also from what's going on and actually in Israel and the occupied territories that there would that these organizations would create networks um, and work together which would you know significantly increase their efficacy. The social elements of the Palestinian refugees in Lebanon are manifold and complex. As convenient as it may be to want to shift the blame onto someone or something, the tragic reality is that the refugees are trapped within a cycle of poverty and suffering. In spite of the efforts of the international community, the improvement of their lot is contingent on the willingness of local and foreign bodies to take the necessary steps to make a difference. Until such a point in time, however, the Palestinian refugees can only rely on their hope to sustain them. يا صديق الأقوى يا محمد يا طاهر الأخلاق يا محمد يا هدي الأكوى يا محمد يا تجرس لله يا محمد يا خير خلق الله يا رسول الله